Season 2 of House the Dragon is going to feel quite a bit different from the first season for one key simple reason that I think will please most viewers, both casual and more invested. For the most part, House of the Dragon did a very good job telling its story during Season 1, and I know many fans who were very much caught off guard with how good House of the Dragon turned out to be, given the divisive nature of the final season of Game of Thrones. It was always going to be a real uphill battle to win people over. A real worry among fans, and I suspect HBO to some extent, was winning over that large contingent who felt burned by Game of Thrones. Thus, despite some flaws in the writing and some questionable creative choices, I do believe believe House of the Dragon Season 1 can be considered successful, but despite all the praise the show has been given, and rightly deserves, it's not immune to criticism, and there are some very valid points made about it, specifically when it comes to the pace of the show and how fast the writers were moving through the story, with the two time skips particularly contentious. When it comes to these two specific issues, it seems that House of the Dragon Season 2 will address them and thus the season as a whole is going to have a very different feel about it, in terms of the pace and tone. A lot of this comes down to simply how much story needed to be fitted in the 10 episodes of season 1, with a lot of events we should have seen on screen being cut from the show with the use of the two time skips. Big, important events, such as the relationship development between Rhaenyra and Harwin Strong that led to the births of her children, I find the sheer lack of time we spent with Damon and Lena particularly troublesome, giving viewers are thrown into the deep end with Lena's death in the same episode as the time skip. Thus, some key plot points lacked the emotional investment needed for them to really have the full effect I think the writers were going for. For example, if we had spent more time with Damon and Lena, seeing them as a family with their daughters, it would have made Lena's death much more emotionally impactful than it turned out to be. When my girlfriend watched the time skip episode, she was extremely confused and she felt it did a really poor job at explaining what happened over the last 10 years and figuring out how characters relationships had developed and changed over that time and this sentiment is something I've seen mentioned many times on social media and in the comment sections of videos. I think the swapping of Millie Alcock and Emily Carey for Emma Darcy and Olivia Cook as Rhaenyra and Alicent among the other aged up casting of characters didn't help either even though I do think the transition was done really well. But ultimately, it's throwing a lot of change at a viewer very quickly. Now, for me personally, while I did miss seeing those skipped events, given I had read the book, I had enough context where it really didn't impact me as a viewer, opposed to the majority of viewers who lacked that important context. While, of course, the second time skip resulted in more casting changes and more events being skipped over, it's not quite as impactful as that first 10-year time jump. Now, what all this accumulates in is giving season 1 a very fast-paced feeling. Almost too fast for your average viewer to keep up with. In reality, that 10 episodes of season 1 should have been more like 14 or 15, given the sheer amount of story they were trying to tell. Season 1 really is the setup to the Dance of the Dragons, and is rightly very important in getting viewers invested in the story and its characters. Given how much happens and the complex political situation, it was always going to be a challenge, but an important one they got right for the future of the show. In the end, I'm glad they took this fast-paced approach as originally HBO wanted to start the show with the death of Viserys, which would have made it very hard to pull off, given how events quickly move in the Dance of the Dragons, and how the context of the build-up is vital as to why characters act the way they do. For example, if we didn't have the backstory between Alicent and Rhaenyra, the events to come really wouldn't have the same level of impact. Why would casual viewers care about Aemon killing Lucerys when we just met them? without really understanding the complexities of their relationship. Now, while we don't know yet for sure at exactly what point the story in Season 2 is going to end, given what we've been able to piece together from set leaks, it seems that Season 2 will definitely not reach the Battle of the Gullets or the Fall of King's Landing. Meaning, in terms of the amount of story being covered in Season 2 compared to Season 1, it's a hell of a lot less. So why is this important? Well, it means the pace of the show should be a lot slower than the first season and it'd be a bit more consistent across the eight episodes, given there won't be any time skips this time around. It means we get to spend more time with the characters and give them room to breathe and develop without it being rushed along at a breakneck pace as needed in season one. Some of the best scenes from the early seasons of Game of Thrones when characters were just talking to each other and building relationships, while season one of House of the Dragon did this too. 
season two should have more room to do it. In theory, it also means a lot less content should be cut, given less story needs to be covered and we don't have to factor in time skips. For example, we will be getting the Battle of the Burning Mill in Season 2. One of my favourite more minor battles are the Dance of the Dragons, between the Blackwoods and the Brackens. The Burning Mill is 100% the kind of event that risked being cut if Season 2 had to move at the kind of pace of the first season. To put it into perspective, Season 1 covered about 24 years of story and character development. In contrast, Season 2 will cover a few weeks to months of time. Such a change is going to affect the tone and feel of the show. Hopefully it will be changed in a good way. How do you feel about the pace of House of the Dragon Season 1? And how do you think the slower pace in Season 2 is going to affect the tone of it? Let's talk about it in the comments.